y'all it's your girl salute maroon welcome back to my channel before we get into this video today make sure y'all like comment and subscribe support your girl follow your girl that's on instagram at salute marie and tiktok at salute marie and make sure your post notification bells is always turned on so every time i post a video y'all tuned in so let's get into this video all right y'all so before we get into this story time today i'm gonna give y'all a little backstory this story is about how the kill dealership tried to scam me y'all so back when i first very first moved into my apartment that i'm currently staying in right now i had like this orange jeep that i paid cash for i ended up getting that car and i had that car for like two or three years straight like paid off nothing was wrong with it you know of course it would have like little things wrong with it here and there i just get it fixed boom ain't nothing like having a car with no payment right so when i got here you know what i'm saying my car ended up breaking her down like the first two weeks i kid y'all not of me moving here like i moved out from being with my baby daddy and i ended up moving into my own spot and i thought everything was everything i had my car my place but then god tested your girl and my car broke down and it was no saving it the engine was gone they was like you know it's gonna cost more than the car to get your engine fixed so it's not even worth it get you a new, a new car so y'all, me being me, I'm very persistent. Like, I feel like I'm the type of person, I don't like depending on nobody. If I feel like I have to depend on you for something, it grinds my gear. So I was just like, no, I can't have this happen to me. Like, I need another car. Thank God I saved up. Like, normally I'm the type, I save money for when I actually need it. And it's so crazy how God worked. You know what I'm saying? You would think that you ball in. You would think that you got a good amount of savings and then he'll come through and then stuff like this will happen. And then you're gonna have to go ahead and use your savings to get you a whole new car. Cause that's exactly what happened. So I was just like, boom. So me and my current boyfriend that I'm with right now, we started like looking around for me a car or whatever. Cause it was just like, I can't go. I have to go to work. I have stuff I gotta do. I gotta pick my kids up. I can't not have no car. So I was kind of rushing the process trying to get me a car. But it was just like, what it, What else am I to do? I didn't want to go get no car from like, what is it called? Like the used cars or whatever. I really didn't want that because I felt like I would have been back in the situation I was put in. But you know what I'm saying? But the only difference is I would be paying on a car that's used that can just break down whenever. So I, I just didn't want that. So I ended up, you know... After a while, I went to like a place called like Drive Time, but you can like make your own payment. So they say, but it's really based off your credit and they make those payments yourself. So that's, that's <clears throat> anyway. So I ended up didn't going through them or whatever, cause they was just way too high. And around that time, my credit was jack, y'all. Jack, jack, it was jack. So I ended up going to this dealership, the Kia dealership. And out of all the places I went to, they were the only ones that was trying to like help me for real. So I thought. So I ended up going there and speaking to this man. Now we're gonna call him. We're gonna call him Paul. Because he looked like a Paul to me. We're gonna call him Paul. That wasn't his name, y'all. I'm just giving y'all a name. We're gonna call him Paul. He ended up being the man that was, you know, assessing me, showing me the lot, showing me the cars, the one that was basically selling me the car, right? So I'm talking to Paul or whatever. I'm telling him, like, you know, I don't have really good credit. You know what I'm saying? I work at such and such. Like, I make good money. I get paid every week. Like, I just need a car. Like, that's all I need. He was like, and, and he was like, your credit really don't matter. Like, hyping me up, y'all. Your credit do matter. Because I ended up getting the lowest type of Kia Rio that it was. Like, it wasn't, it was the bare minimum car. Like, the basic car of them all, right? So, me and my current boyfriend, we was there and... You know what I'm saying? I, me being me, I'm just excited because this man is basically making me think like, hey, girl, you got to get a car today. You're going to leave here with a car today. You you think you walking, but I wasn't walking. I ain't walking nowhere. But uh, <laughs> you think you you think you stressing, whatever, but you got to have you a car today. So I'm just like talking to him or whatever. He pulled up my information and he was just like, yeah, we can give you, get you a car. This one right here, the Kia Rio. You only got to put 500 down for this. Da -da -da -da. Mind you, y'all, my car was broke down at the gas station, so I was trying to get it towed, and I was just like, well, I have a car, you know what I'm saying, that I can't do nothing with it, so can I, like, trade it in and it'd be less, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking me trading in my car, that would lower my payments, that would lower the amount that I owe towards the car, you know what I'm saying? 
but we're gonna get into that y'all so they ended up going to get my car towing it all that now mind you the the guy who act to who let me let me run back it was a man um like a tow man he i ended up getting his information from somebody and he told it to my house so he was just like, you know, what's wrong with the car? And I told him, and he was just like, well, if you don't want it, you know, I'll buy it from you. But me being me, I'm just like, nah, like, I'm thinking, like, I'm going to sell it to whoever I'm about to get my car from. Like, but I should listen to him because <laughs> I got played. I got played. So after he did that or whatever, I was just like, you know what? Well, I got my car at the house. Like, I can just trade it in, you know, that way. It'll be like a win-win. So he was like, cool, yeah, we'll have somebody come pick up the car for you. We'll have somebody come pick it. That's nothing. We'll have somebody, like, just selling me, y'all, putting that shit on, putting that shit on. So I'm like, yeah, okay. I get in my address. They come get the car. Boom. So then he was just, like, having me sign all this paperwork and stuff like that. Now, mind you, y'all, I found all this stuff that I'm about to tell y'all now later. But basically, the car that I had was, like, one of the newer Kia Rios, but it was the bare minimum basic car. I didn't have no backup camera, I don't think. I didn't have no no sunroof. I didn't even have, like, you know how you put your elbow on the, the rest? I didn't even have that. I didn't have nothing. <laughs> like, it was crazy, but it was a nice car. It was little, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was used to a truck, you know, that was what I preferred. But it was, I was little, whatever. So he had me sign all these documents or whatever, y'all. I ended up riding off that same day because, like I said, I gave him the money. Boom. Now, mind you. I didn't know this. After this situation happened, time went on, time went on. The car was only worth 15000 When he showed me how much money I had to pay every month, I think it was like 400 almost $500. You know what I'm saying? And the car, he put that the car was worth 35000 Basically, because my car... My ins my um not my insurance my credit score was so low he was saying that my APR rate was a whole different in a whole different bracket basically I'm paying double for the car like I'm not even just paying what the car is worth I'm paying double that just because of my credit right so I signed all the paperwork being a dummy not really looking into it not getting somebody to look behind me because my boyfriend at that time he ain't know what was going on let's be real I'm sorry babe. But he ain't no, he wasn't no help either regarding that situation. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, I'm about to get me a car today. Like, it's brand new. I put the miles on that car. I rode off with that car and it had like five miles. And that's probably from people just ride testing it. And I put them miles on them, that car, right? So basically, and it's so, it's another story time regarding the car. But we're going to get into that later. So I rode off with the car, whatever. Now, mind you, when 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 <laughs> when i when i signed up to get the car they can see in the system i was on leave at work i was on leave i wasn't currently working you know what i'm saying i still had my job but i was just on leave like for like two weeks so he was just like you know can you go back to work you know what i'm saying because when we put this in you know like the loan people who's loaning me the money for the car basically they want to see that i'm actively on the job you know what i'm saying so he was like can you go back to work earlier so it can you know kick back and say that you're working you get what i'm saying like so they know that they not financing with somebody that don't really got no job for real you know what i'm saying even though i did have a job i do have a job that's what he was asking for so mind you y'all after that happened you know what i'm saying i already had the car in my possession he ended up texting me because I didn't go back to work. I'm not about to go back to work earlier than what my leave was. No, y'all already gave me the car. It is what it is. I'm literally going back to work next week. Like, it's not that big of a deal. So after like maybe a week or two, I'm riding in the car, y'all. I ain't even have to pay no payment until like two months later. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they do that when you first get a brand new car. So he texted me like, and that's how I should have known it was a red flag. It wasn't no like, hey, I'm going to bleep that out. Hey, Mrs. Mrs. Da -da -da, um, can we come back? Can you come back up here? We need to talk. Okay. It was never that. It was texting. Like I should have known right there. Boom. That was a red flag. But I didn't think of it as a red flag you know what i'm saying he was just like um did you go back to work uh the loan people kick back your loan and now we have to try to refinance you with someone else because it looks as if you're not currently working so we're gonna have to redo your finance paperwork so i'm just like uh yeah i'll go to work next week like you know what i'm saying and he was like well i thought that she was saying that she was gonna go back to work and i'm just like nah i can't do that like 
I can't go back to work before my my leave is up. Like, what? So he was like, well, we're going to have to have you come back in and such and such to figure out what's going on with all this. So after that, I go back in or whatever. They ended up finding another finance company. I ended up going back to work or whatever, giving them all the check stubs or whatever with it currently saying, like with hours on it, saying that I'm going to work. Because even though I was getting paid for my leave, that wasn't good enough. They needed to see like legit hours of me in the building. So after that happened or whatever, he started like being weird, started like texting me. He was just like, yeah, um, the, the refinance company is um, saying that you're going to have to put down another 500 uh, because they had to do it again and that, that, this. So I'm just like, nah, bro, that don't even sound right. I'm just like, hey, Paul, um, that don't sound right. I traded in my car to you guys. I put 500 down already. All y'all doing is trying to find a refinance company. They already kicked the other one out, which means y'all got the money back. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm hitting up my sister. I'm telling my boyfriend. I'm just like, this don't make no sense. This sounded like a skizzy scam. Like, it's no way I have to pay this man even more money when I already paid my money down and traded in my car. So he's like, yeah, um... When you get a chance, I'll let you, I'll let you slide. Um, just don't bring it up when you come in the office to redo your paperwork. Just don't bring it up. So I'm just like, what? Like, what do you mean don't bring it up? You want your money, but you don't want me to bring it up that I owe y'all? He basically tried to flip it and say, well, if they know that I'm letting you pay at a later date, I might get in trouble. So y'all know what I did? I went up there with my mama and my, my kids. And when I went up there, I was already aggravated because it felt like he was trying to play me. He was already on something like texting me. Like he'd be like, oh, well, people already think that car dealers are, are scammers. And this. like, why are you even going this far to explain yourself? I never had nobody that sold me a car that be on my phone like that. Like, Paul, what are you doing? Like, we can talk in the office. Why are you talking to me, first of all, outside of business hours, and then you're texting my phone, and then you're telling me not to bring up money that I owe y'all, but I don't really owe y'all. Like, what are you talking about? So when he was like, oh, don't say nothing when you get here, I automatically knew he was on some bullshit. So when I got there, my mama like, Dante, don't say nothing. Just wait till you talk to the man, because it's another man besides him that do all the billing and everything, like the root that actually get you to the point where the car is sold to you or, you know, given to you and you go through the finance company. So I goes back there with him. Now, mind you, when I went in there, Paul looking at me like, hi, like our giddy giddy and stuff like that. Like, hi. And I'm just looking at him in the side. I like, hey. So when I get there back with Buddy or whatever, I'm already on 10 because I already knew what I was going to do. You think I'm not about to say nothing? Oh, that's going to make me say something. So I go back there with the other dude. Or whatever. I'm gonna just name him Steven. And Steven was just like, Yeah, I'm about to block my <laughs> I'm blocking that again. He was like, Yeah, Miss Uh da 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 da. Um, I just wanna let you know we ended up finding another finance company or whatever for you. You just gotta sign these paperwork right here and this and that and that and this. And I'm just like, Okay, so I'm signing or whatever. And I was just like, and I wanna ask you a question. He was like, And what is that? And I was just like, So why do I have to pay y'all even more money or to give y'all another down payment when I already paid a down payment and I already sold y'all my car? And he was like, what? You don't owe anything. He was like, right here, look. Now, mind you, y'all, Stephen pointed to the paper and he showed me where I made the $500 payment for my de but deposit, my down payment, basically. Then he was like, and look right here, this is what, what we sold your car for, y'all. I want y'all to guess in the comments how much y'all think this man sold my car for. Y'all, this man is pointing. Steven is like, yeah, you paid uh, the uh, down payment of 500 and you also sold your car. We sold that for $100. We sold that for $100. What? $100? $100 for a whole vehicle? And he's saying that because the engine was messed up. But if y'all put a new engine in there, the car is brand new. Nothing's wrong with the... Y'all, it blew me. So I'm just like, all right. You said I don't got to pay all nothing else, right? He's like, nah, you good. Like, you good to go. Like, we good. So after that situation or whatever, and I mind you, before I came in there, Steven... I mean, not Steven. 
Paul also made a statement like, well, um, with us refinancing your car again, you already had the car for over a month. Now they pushed your payments back even two more months. So basically, I didn't make no car payment for like three months. So he was just like, that shouldn't be a problem for you to give the, the extra $500 that the other finance company needs. So when I left out, you know what I'm saying? I guess he felt like, well, girl, you, you, he, I don't know what he thought, but it was just like, well, you ain't have to make no car payment. So you going to pay me some. So the man was just like, you know, you good. You don't have to pay that. So as I'm walking out or whatever, I'm like, bye, Steven, whatever, because all y'all got me twisted. I see Paul and he looking at me. He going to come up to me like, well, oh, so when you think you're going to make that uh 500 uh payment? I said, uh, Steven said, I don't. And I said it loud. I said, Steven said, I don't have to pay you anything. And I, I said, um, come on. I got my mama and my kids and we left. And he was standing there looking dumb as hell. You really tried to finesse me out of $500. What you thought? you That was your tip out? Huh? Paul? What you thought that was your tip out? Like, no, sir. We're not doing this today. No. Like, he really tried to scam me, y'all. Y'all. And that's a wrap for that video, y'all. If y'all like this video, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Support your girl. Follow your girl. That's on TikTok at Salute Marie. Instagram at Salute Marie. Until next time. Peace.